Major funding for these broadcasts has been provided by grants from New York Community Bank, Amtrust Title Insurance Company, Perfect Building Maintenance, m and Bank, Customers Bank, Marks Paneth LLP, Capital One Bank, Collins Building Services, Meridian Capital Group. Additional support has been provided by grants from AKA Hotel Residences Corman Communities, Aerial Property Advisors, Amarant Bank, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, Briarwood Organization, Chase Commercial Mortgage Lending, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Citizens Bank, Dime Community Bank, Douglaston Development Levine Builders, Flushing Bank, Friedman LLP, Handro Properties LLC, Handler Real Estate Organization, Hodges Ward Elliott INC, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, John Casamitidis Red Apple Group, Keysight Capital Partners, Matone Group, New Banks, Newmark Knight Frank, Ocean First Bank, Optimum Window Manufacturing Corp., People's United Bank, Rockefeller Group, Rosewood Realty Services, Stonehenge NYC, SVN CPEX Real Estate Services, Tierra CRG, the Meringo Family Foundation, and these friends. Brooklyn, a place where I grew up, a place that so much action. So today I have an individual who came to Brooklyn via Jerusalem and who's become a very prominent individual as a leader, as the founder and CEO of Terra CRG, Ofer Kohn. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So tell me about the history. I was saying Jerusalem. Tell me about the family in Jerusalem. <laughs> Going back to your, gra- your great-grandfather and then your grandfather, because your grandfather really helped you get involved, s- surprisingly, in the real estate. So my, my father uh, was born in Jerusalem to a very poor family. His grandparents uh, were both uh, from Iran. Uh, his uh, parents, my grandparents, were born in Jerusalem. He was the youngest of six. Uh, and when he was two years old, his dad uh, left to Colombia, South America. Right, you said he went to Bogota. Yeah, he went to Bogota. And subsequently, actually, for my dad's 80th birthday six years ago, we went to visit his grave. That was really uh, kind of an interesting experience. But yeah, I mean, so my, my dad was uh, two years old when his, when his dad moved on. Yeah, now, what did he do when he went to Bogota, your grandfather? So there's, there's, there's no direct reporting. <laughs> on what he did, but what we do know is that at some point when he became a little bit more well off, he starts sending money. Right, you said he sent clothing with gold coins. Yeah, he was putting the the, the coins inside of the clothing. You know, at that point, you know, this is like uh, the 1940s, uh, the 1950s. Uh, He ended up, I think he passed away in 1956 or something in Bogota. But he, but he ended came, up. Never came back. To he Brooklyn. never really came back. He came to visit when, right before my dad went to the army. When dad was 18. But your grandmother was still. In- yeah. So my grandmother raised six kids on her own, and at some point he sent enough money to buy a big, nice building in a good part. Right, which is your entrance into real estate, right? <laughs> this was my entrance to real right, estate. Right. So it was a building with what? Eight apartments, you said? I think it's like six or eight apartments. It's a really nice part of Jerusalem. Okay, and you had, there were six siblings in total, your father mm-hmm. and five siblings. Right. So each one would inherit yes. one apartment. Yeah. Okay. And that's where I grew up. That's the house where I grew up, and actually that's where my parents still live. So. Now tell me about who was the individual who worked on the roads, the pipelines? So, so my, um, my grandfather on my mom's side, uh, he was born in Turkey. Izmir, Turkey, which is sort of like close to Greece. And he immigrated to Israel and uh, he was an electrician. Um, He was a Sephardic Jew, but in order to get a job uh, in Tel Aviv, 
Uh, back in the day, you had to pretend you're Ashkenazi. <laughs> so the, the cool story is that his last name was Monaji. I guess it's a Turkish Jewish name or right. whatever. And he changed it to Monajinsky. Then he landed so, this job and he ended up being the electrician to lay out all the lines of, uh, but the first electricity line so is at Tel Aviv. So this is your mother's father. Yeah. So tell me about your mother. Yeah, so my mom grew up in Tel Aviv. Uh, okay, she grew up in Tel Aviv. Dad grew up in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And mom's became a nurse, right? Yeah, and then in nursing school. She went to nursing school with my aunt, my, uh, my father's sister, and she introduced them at some point. Okay, <laughs> so now let's talk about you. You were born when? 1971. Okay, in Jerusalem. Yeah. So what was Jerusalem like growing up as a kid? Before, we're going to go from <clears throat> the early days until the, the army. Yeah, I mean, so I think you know, on a lot of way, in a lot of ways, Jerusalem was just like any other city. Uh, it's a relatively big city, uh, uh, but, you know, we lived in a very nice, uh, back then, wasn't a wealthy neighborhood. We, we were only there by luck because my grandfather had the, uh, building. Had the building, you know, sent the money to buy the building. Otherwise, we would have lived in a much uh, less uh, kind of well-off neighborhood. But, you know, growing up, Jerusalem was nice. Um, you know, you could, uh, after school, when you're in high school, after school, you can just literally walk to the old city and just walk around. I mean, it was a, it was a nice experience. I mean, you do have a lot of sort of uh, Mideast uh, tension over the years and now you wars said, and now things. Now, your father fought in three wars, he Yeah, said. my father was in three wars. And when I grew up, was sort of through the Intifada as the first, the second. Uh, and when I was in the army, it was the first Gulf War, I guess. So, I mean, there's always something going on in Israel. So when you were growing up, what were you thinking of doing? I mean, there was no idea of real estate. My first, uh, so I was always kind of entrepreneurial, um, but I was always very creative. I uh, studied art and design starting in high school. Uh, my first business actually was when I was 12, me and a good friend of mine, we had a car wash business in the neighborhood. Uh, it was a great business because we took all the money that people paid us, but our parents paid for the expenses. So it was kind of like really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I, I sort of, uh, I was really, I was pretty much into music, art and design. I was really on the creative side, you know, real estate, uh, or really business for that matter wasn't uh, any priority for me. Okay, so you graduated high school what year? 80... 88? Yeah, 88, 89. Okay, and then you said to me, what did you do for the one year before you went to the Army? It wasn't really a one year. It was a, it was a kind of a four, five, six months break. Traveled a little bit. Uh, then I went to the Army. So talk to, talk to me about the three years, because you had an interesting army experience. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think uh, people, you know, it, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually did not fight in any war. Uh, I had uh, the luxury of... Um, you didn't see combat? I did not see combat. I was uh, heading a creative, kind of a creative services division, and in in, in sort of what... Uh, uh, in layman's term, like the training or educational kind of division of the army where you train soldiers. Uh, what were you training things. them? So different things. I mean, so... Radio? Or? No, I mean, so this is more, uh, a little bit more aspirational. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, two different kinds of soldiers. Uh, w you know, one type of soldier that maybe didn't graduate from high school and need to kind of get a little bit more... Um, so like a high school preparation for a GED kind of, type of program? Kind of. Yeah. And then the other one was um, uh, Hebrew for, uh, for kids that grew up in other places. I mean, when I, when I joined the army, it was right after big immigration from Ethiopia, actually. People would, would join the army without knowing that much Hebrew or anything about the culture of Israel. Or So you spent three years in the army? Mm -hmm. So now what happens? So now... Um, you like this uh, marketing, you like... Yeah, I like marketing, I like the music, I like creative. I joined, uh, I was looking for a job in graphic design. I joined the record label in Tel Aviv. I moved to Tel Aviv full time. When did you move to Tel Aviv? When? 93. Okay. Yeah, at the end of the army, 93. 
How, why why Tel Aviv more uh, entrepreneur more? Yeah, people. Tel Aviv had sort of like uh, Tel Aviv is a you know is a real city. I mean, Jerusalem was uh, a big city in terms of population, but from a industry and uh, media or even finance, it wasn't as developed, right? So if you wanted to be exposed to like a lot of different things, you have to be in Tel Aviv. So how did you get a job in the uh, media business? You know, I had a lot of, uh, just because I was doing a lot of work in the Army and I was running this creative services division and I had a lot of exposure and a lot of training, I guess, um, I was a good candidate and I just went to talk to them and, you know, Tel Aviv, I mean, Tel Aviv is a relatively small town. And that job kind of evolved. I became the creative director there. They made me a partner. And then in this is the end of 95, yeah, in 1995. So it was fun. I mean, we did a lot of, you know, great things. We did all the creative work for all these different artists. Uh, and then um, at the end of 95, I decided to move to New York. In 96, okay, I moved. We'll, we'll get to New York. But you said to me, was that when you were involved with Napster, the, the streaming? When I moved here, yeah. Okay, so it's 1995. Not you, Napster, but yes. <laughs> okay, 1995. When you come over here, had you ever been to New York? Had you ever been to? The yeah, US? I've been to New York once for like a month, right? Uh, maybe a couple years earlier. You, when you moved to New York without a job, right? Okay, where'd you live originally? I moved to New York uh, with this idea that maybe I could potentially do something with a company in Israel and and do some kind of a partnership with them in in in, in New York. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, I just moved here with my portfolio, and I and I was knocking on doors. I, I uh, moved into a rent stabilized rent control apartment in Soho on McDougal Street, McDougal just off of Prince. And um, did you have any relatives here? I have family that is still here. Yes. So you didn't you didn't move into the family. no. <laughs> okay. So th how do you? How'd you get a job? So I mean, you were peddling your yeah. So I you know I was trying to you know I was trying to uh, you know, I mean it took a few months I was I was going to meetings uh, and trying to pitch myself uh, to these different record labels. I actually scored a freelance gig at Def Jam Records for like a couple of days, uh, and then I and then I realized that this is a little bit um, kind of counterintuitive and I wanted to create a little bit more of a competitive edge for myself. The internet just started since 1996 and it was this new thing that was very exciting but nobody knew anything about it and I start seeing ads for people that are looking for people that know how to build websites but nobody knew how to build websites because there was just like the first few websites. Um, so I just basically taught myself uh, HTML and created a website and with my portfolio and my resume and things. And so the, the, <coughs> the website was your, was your, you, yeah. was your portfolio. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, you know, and I saw all these ads and there was a startup company, one of the first startups, one of the few startups that was happened to be an internet music startup. So that was kind of perfect to have background in creative and marketing and music. What do you mean by internet music? So this was the first... Uh, <coughs> the streaming? <coughs> yeah, the first company, that one of the first companies that really try to uh, bring uh, music to the internet. The name of the company was SonicNet. It subsequently got acquired by MTV in 1999. 1999, and then what happens? And then I said to myself, well, if I'm so smart and the, the company that I work for and I created all these things with, uh, at this point I had like a team of 15. If I'm so smart and, and, and I'll maybe, go I on can, my own. maybe I can go on my own and start my own startup. Okay, but as a marketing company or as creative company? No, so I, I, uh, company? no, so I didn't want to be in the services business. I kind of got fed up with it uh, and the design and creative services. And I kind of didn't want to be on that side of things. And I just want to develop my own product and there were a bunch of different iterations of it, but the, one of the last iterations of the product was some kind of a, um, like a web-based platform for video, for sharing, for uploading and sharing video. Now it sounds obvious and idiotic, but this is uh, so before, 99, 2000, before, you, before, before you, YouTube, before anything, before people actually believed that video <clears throat> on the internet would be kind of a thing. Mm. So I ran with it. Um, for about a year, year and a half, raised some money, and then the dot-com uh, bubble kind of crashed. It was hard to raise more funding. 
I realized I, don't, I didn't really know what I was doing. So is this when you go into the <laughs> consulting business with yeah. a friend? And at that point, I, uh, at that point, I um, partnered with uh, two other is actually Israeli guys. Uh, and we created a, an advisory firm that essentially helps Israeli startups move to New York. And we worked with a lot of very interesting s products and services and a lot of entrepreneurs and companies that kind of needed access to the U.S. market. So um, what, were you, what were you providing to them? The so we were, we were essentially uh, some kind of a hybrid between a marketing and business development team, like an outsourced marketing and business development team for them in the New York market. Okay. So we would become their face in New York, and we would work with like five to ten companies at a time. So you, you created the sales force for them? Basically, yeah. Okay. Created the first, um, whatever the product was, the first installation, the first sale, the first... Okay, but what type of companies were they? Oof. I mean, there were technology companies, software companies, uh, media services companies. It was a lot, a lot of actually very interesting kind of collection of services. But it was, a, it, was a, it was an interesting period, and it was also an interesting um, uh, work because you get to work with a lot of different... You meet interesting people. You meet interesting people, and you learn a lot about industries, and you... Now, did you, know, you have to go back to Tel Aviv? Not as much. Not as much. One of my partners was more going back and forth a little bit more, and uh, I was more focused here. So one day, uh, I had... Uh, we had twin girls in, in uh, 2004. In anticipation for, uh, for that, I, uh, so there was a kind of an interesting period. There was 2001, there was September 11th, there was this whole period of what the hell are we doing? Uh, back then, raising venture capital in New York was not as available or easy as it is today. Realized that consulting business could have been great as a venture capital business. If we had equity in all these different companies, that would right. be a great run. But as a, as a consulting, as a fee business, it wasn't as interesting, it wasn't real, uh, there was not that much trajectory. So I sat down with a, friend, a good friend of mine, Corey, uh, at my house uh, at that point, uh, and, and, and so, and, and we said, you know, what should we do? And we said, why don't we buy a building? And then we went to Bushwick and we bought our first building. Now, I have, so when was your entree to Brooklyn, being only Brooklyn? So, so, so really, you know, uh, 2004 was kind of a pivotal year. Uh, had, I mean, had you gone to Brooklyn? I mean, yeah, no. I mean, so my my, I mean, quite honestly, my familiarity with Brooklyn was 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 not, you know, extensive at that point. But started going back and forth to Brooklyn to look at real estate in 2003 to 2004, decided to move to Brooklyn, bought a house in Prospect Heights, and then bought our first building in Bushwick, and kind of fell in love with it and kind of saw something that I was looking for, which okay, was just but, like- Okay, but at this time you were not a real estate broker. No. You were more of a- An entrepreneur. An entrepreneur who was phasing yourself out of the other business, right? Right. With two kids. Right. A house, <laughs> right? And another house that you bought with you, with your That's buddy. right. And uh, something in the energy of Brooklyn kind of really uh, got me excited. And the going through the experience of buying the first building, realized that kind of want to buy a lot of buildings. But then again, I didn't have that much access to capital. But I also realized I'm a little bit of a deal junkie, and I want to do a lot of deals. And I said, oh, by the time I raise money and I buy another building and another building and these are small buildings and each building is $700,000. I mean, I just be decided to, uh, I decided the best way to learn the business is to become a broker. And I said, this is a great way. I have a lot of mar marketing background. I have sales experience. I'm in Brooklyn. Yeah, but you know nothing about the real estate market. I know nothing about the real estate market. Right. Okay. So this is 2005? Four. 2004, and then 2005 became a broker. Okay, <laughs> you become a broker, and then you have this experience with Paul Massey, mm -hmm. of Massey Knackle. What happened? You know, Paul and Bob had a really nice platform, and they had a, their office in Brooklyn got really, started to get really, really busy. It was, back then it was in Bay Ridge. And uh, as I was walking around Bushwick, I kept seeing the Massey Knackle signs, and I, you know, so I went to meet with Paul and some of the partners, and 
Paul was not that excited about hiring me. He kind of. But he didn't like the Israeli I, marketer. I don't know. I mean, I kind of felt like maybe he thought, you know, maybe he thought I was a little bit too entrepreneurial. Um, and um, anyway, by the second meeting, I convinced him to hire me. Uh, and I worked uh, under Paul and Tim King and some of, uh, you know, other great guys that became uh, really close friends over the years um, for two and a half years. And then the deal junkie decides <laughs> to go out on your own? Yeah, and then, and then I realized that um, I want to go back to, become, to, to be an entrepreneur. I kind of got a sense a little bit of what real estate brokerage was for two years. Um, I had a little territory in Sunset Park. We did a lot of industrial sales. You know, after a couple of years, I had a 25% market share in a little market. And again, I was like, if I'm so smart, why should I work for someone else? I should work for myself. Um, but really, the vision so what's was... So what's the first date? When do you open up Terra CRG? The beginning and what, of... Why, and as I asked 12 you before, years ago, yeah. why do you call it Terra CRG? So... Um, yeah, so the, the end of 2007, I decided to start the company. Um, I, I, just, I started a company with, back then, my associate, Melissa DiBella. Her name right now is Melissa Warren. And I, one day I came to her, I said, listen, we're going to start a company. Why don't you look for an office space for us? And she said, okay. And we kind of sort of did it. And beginning of, January, beginning of January of 2008, nobody knew that Lehman Brothers was going to crash 10 months later. You know, we just launched... Our, our company, I called it Terra CRG, I named it Terra CRG. I mean, I didn't want to name it after myself. I wanted to have a name that is a slightly more generic, but not too simple that other people can affiliate with. Terra means land in Latin, CRG, CRG means commercial realty group, and kind of sort of happened. The so logo is the map of Brooklyn. So we're in January of 2008, is this headquarters? It's actually, it was in Sunset Park, you know, it was just kind of simple for us because we had a lot of these relationships and one of our clients gave us some space on the second floor of a garage building that he owned. And he kind of gave us a very affordable space and that, that's where we were for about a year. During this year, subprime market collapsed, Lehman Brothers collapsed, and... The Merrill Lynch collapsed. And yeah. And I remember getting calls from a lot of different friends, including you and including Paul, and saying, are you sure you won't? want to continue to do this. This is maybe not the right time to be on your own. But we kept on going. And the, the, 2000, the, the 2009 to 2010, some portion of 2011 was, uh, you know, essentially where we cut our teeth on the market. And when did it, you make the commitment to yourself that you were going to only be in only Brooklyn? From the very beginning. I felt the Brooklyn market's going to go through a very strong trajectory and I felt like whoever is going to affiliate themselves with that stock is going to become like a tracking stock for a very hot stock that's going to run up. I didn't know that the market's going to crash with a global recession and I didn't know that the market's going to run up after the recession the way he did in Brooklyn. But I felt like over a period of 15 years it's something that's probably really good to own. So you started with Melissa and yourself mm -hmm. and where are you today? 35 people, probably. Okay. And let's talk about certain things that you're involved with. Besides Only Brooklyn, each year you run a, an event called mm -hmm. Only Brooklyn. Tell me about that. Yeah, 10 years ago, we actually this year, uh, it's going to be the 10th uh, anniversary. Uh, we started this 10 years ago. Initially, it was sort of like a forum, a, very, a relatively small forum to get people to be familiar with what the Brooklyn real estate market is. And it became you know, as the market grew and we grew, the conference grew. So now it's a conference that we hold in downtown Brooklyn every year, usually in the spring. It's 500 people. It's a full day conference that uh, really speaks about not just where the market was, but where sort of like the leaders of the market think the market is going. Okay, then what about the podcast? When did you start that? Um, started about two years ago. I'm having a lot of fun so with it. It's called Hello BK? Hey BK. Hey BK. Hey BK, and it's the, it's the podcast about the people behind the Brooklyn Transformation. And it's a show that I basically I'm interviewing uh, people that were really kind of influential in the trajectory of Brooklyn. Not just pure real estate. Uh, and businesses. Business and, and civic as well. Okay, and let's talk, speaking about the civic, 
You're very proud of certain affiliations. Bro Downtown Brooklyn Partnership? Yeah, so I, I'm the chair of the board of the Downtown Brooklyn Partnership, which is essentially, you know, it's an organization that started, um, I guess, uh, 15 years ago to, uh, to really uh, help continue to develop Downtown Brooklyn and direction that we needed to go. So initially it was the rezoning and the residential development and then retail and now it's office and bringing businesses to downtown Brooklyn. And it's okay. really a, a, a consortium of... Uh, the Navy Yard? Talk about that. Yeah, the Navy Yard, I, I believe I joined the Navy Yard board three years ago. It's one of the most uh, fun board meetings to go to. It's very, very exciting what's happening in the Navy Yard the last uh, few years. And I kind of joined it in, a, in, a, in, a, in an important time. And then the Chamber of Commerce? Yeah, and I'm still very growing. involved in the uh, Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. and I'm. I've been the co-chair of the real estate committee of that. Let's talk about the girls. Tell me about them, the love of your life. Yeah, so I have two girls, twin girls. They're I just turned 15. Their names? Uh, Daya and Ocean. Um, yeah. <laughs> what can I tell you? High school. Yeah, high school. That's great. Yeah. For somebody who is a graphic arts person, you've changed quite a bit, and you have become my favorite friend from only Brooklyn. Thanks for being here again. Thank you, Michael.